Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will discuss the various important points related to the arm. So let's get started. The first point related to the arm is the intracapsular tendon. You should know that there is a tendon of the anterior compartment muscles of the arm that is intracapsular in the shoulder joint. That means it passes deep to the capsule or inside the capsule of the shoulder joint and this is the long head of biceps muscle. Another important point to discuss are various changes occurring at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis. So one important event that is occurring is the brachial artery. Suppose this is the brachial artery that was in the anterior compartment. It is being crossed by the median nerve at the insertion of coracobrachialis from, so this is the median nerve from its lateral to its medial side. So if this is the body, so this is the medial side and this is the lateral. So the median nerve crosses the brachial artery at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis from the lateral to the medial side. And now another point is that there is a ruptured, ruptured of tendon of biceps is an important clinical in terms of MCQ. Whenever there is a rupture of biceps, it's usually when there is a lot of strain to the biceps muscle and this causes a pop. Usually this occurs in the weight lifters, heavy weight lifters. Uh, there's a pop and usually the tendon of biceps becomes very prominent. Another important point is that you should uh, be very clear in what is the cutaneous supply of the arm. And you should know what is the branch of what. So if this is the arm and this is the forearm, okay? So this is the forearm and this is the arm. We all know, we all know that we have a medial cord of the brachial plexus that is giving medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and arm. So this entire medial area of the entire forearm and arm is supplied by the medial cord of the brachial plexus with the branches the medial cutaneous nerve of arm and medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. However, what supplies the lateral is actually very, it gets quite confusing in MCQ point of view. So you should know if this is the skin of the lateral side of your arm, the arm has a supply called the upper lateral cutaneous nerve and then it has a lower lateral cutaneous nerve and then it has a lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. These are three very different nerves. All of these branches are coming from different nerves and that's where it gets confusing. But you should have in your mind that the upper lateral cutaneous nerve is a branch of the axillary, while the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm is a branch of the radial nerve. And finally, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm is a branch of the musculocutaneous nerve. Remember this, the arm, A-R-M, the arm nerves are supplying the lateral side of the arm and the forearm. And these are beginning, upper lateral is the axillary nerve branch, lower lateral is the radial nerve branch, and M, musculocutaneous branch, is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. And always remember the entire posterior side of your arm and your forearm is supplied by the branches of the radial nerve. Radial nerve is a posterior sided nerve. So it gives the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm and it gives the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. You should be very clear about which nerve is giving which branch. Moreover, you should also know the very important nerves of the humerus and where they lie in the humerus. So the first nerve is the, the one, the nerve that is in the surgical neck of the humerus is called the axillary nerve while the nerve that is in the radial groove of the humerus is the radial nerve and finally medial epicondyle the nerve that runs behind the medial epicondyle is the ulnar nerve this is very important you should know the accompanying vessels with these nerves the axillary nerve is accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral vessels the radial nerve is accompanied by the profunda brachii vessels and later the anterior descending branches of the profunda brachii vessels and the ulnar nerve is accompanied by the superior ulnar collateral vessels. Another important point is that the ulnar nerve pierces the medial intramuscular septum while the radial nerve pierces the lateral intramuscular septum. You, we all know that in the arm, the medial or the forearm, the medial border is the ulnar border and the lateral border is the radial border. So according to the names. Moving on, you should know that there is, in the lower end of the humerus, there is a trochlea and a capitulum. 
So this is the trochlea it is lying at the medial side. So the trochlea is a little below than the rest of the bone. So if this is the bone and this is the medial side, the trochlea is a little, it projects downwards, it's six millimeter below the normal bone. This causes the elbow joint to be formed in an angle. If you can see then the bones of the forearm are like this. So you can see that there is a angle forming over here. This is known as the carrying angle. So whenever you hold shoppers, if you see someone holding shoppers and they're holding them, you will realize that by default, there is a angle that is created when you are holding something. You should know the new, where the new nutrient foramen lies in the humerus. It lies in the anteromedial surface and the nutrient artery is derived from the brachial artery. Moving on, injections in the arm, as you know, this is the deltoid muscle. It is preferred that the intramuscular injections be given in the middle of the muscle because if you give a little above, then the surgical neck of humerus is exposed and you are damaging the axillary nerve that I mentioned earlier. Moreover, if there is any fracture of shaft, the radial nerve is damaged. If there is condylar fracture, for example, the epicondylar, medial epicondylar fracture, there is the damage of ulnar nerve. So that's all for some important points. Wishing you all the best. Thank you for watching.